Start college as a student. Start growing as a leader. Start your career as an officer. Start strong. When you register to take Army ROTC course electives, you'll be on the path to leadership. You'll also learn lessons that go beyond the classroom. And as an Army ROTC cadet, you may be eligible for full tuition scholarship and a monthly allowance of up to $500. When you graduate and complete Army ROTC, you will leave ready to lead as an officer in the U.S. Army, Army Reserve, or Army National Guard. To find out more, visit your Army ROTC representative. Contact Army ROTC San Bernardino at 909-537-5533 or visit armyrotc.csusb.edu for more information. There's strong and then there's Army strong. Paid for by the United States Army. Welcome back to My Awesome Empire. As we close our program, we meet Jonathan Gonzalez from North Vermont Elementary in San Bernardino. Hello, my name is Jonathan. I am 12 years old. I know I'm just still a kid, but when I'm graduating from high school, I am going to attend college. After college, my dream is to become a police officer. The reason why I want to become a police officer is so I can help people from being in danger. I don't want anyone to get hurt I want them to be safe. So that's why I want to become a police officer. Thanks for joining us today for another My Awesome Empire, produced entirely by students at Cal State San Bernardino. Guests today were suggested by our awesome listeners. Do you know of a great student or a senior citizen, a doctor or babysitter or storekeeper? We'd love to hear about it. Write to us. My Awesome Empire at CSUSB.edu. Thanks to student producer co hosts Aaron Campbell, Arnold Robles, and Amanda Fernandez, and chief production engineer Brian Malagon. My Awesome Empire is a production of the College of Arts and Letters at Cal State San Bernardino. Until next time, I'm Lacey Kendall. Have an awesome week. KCAA Loma Linda. Ha, yeah, y'all know what time it is. So just sit back and relax because the show's about to start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Down to Earth Talk. You guys can hear me? No? Is your mic on? Is my mic on? Yeah, yeah, I just got to get in here. You guys can hear me now? No? Am I good? <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Welcome to Down to Earth Talk. Uh, we are having uh, we're having a good time tonight, right? This is yeah. fun, right? Yeah. Making memories. So um, next to me, I have the wonderful Miss Nemia Dokiai. What's up, you guys? Thanks for tuning in. And next to her, we have Mr. I.E. Oh, go, so go ahead, say it again. You were off. Oh, I'm so sorry. There Hi you guys. go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear myself. It's good. All right. So, <laughs> I am Nimi Adokie in the house. Yeah. And then next to her is Mr. I.E. Hello, Mr. everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Down to Earth Talk. Yep. And uh, today we have um, a special guest. And uh, Me. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special guest, and we're going to be talking about um, emergency preparedness and how to be prepped for emergency and, and making sure your emergency kits are put together. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. And so our guest with us, are you there? Are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. There you are. <laughs> it's, uh, okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you. You're good. Okay. Good to roll. Good, good to rock and roll. Um. I, I totally botched that saying, right? <laughs> Good to rock and roll. Are we, are we ready to roll? Is that we're, what it is? I don't know what I'm saying. That's 
like what I it's call just my one party. of those days, and I'm still not through my coffee yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Jennifer Jennifer Stewart Ty is the uh, the founder of City Girl Prepper. Hello, Jennifer. Hi. Thanks for having me. And this is not your first time on Down to Earth. This is uh, your you're a return guest. I am a returning guest. Thank you we, for inviding me again. I yeah, had a great time. We had and a great. So much has happened in my business since we last talked. Oh, really? Well, we were we that were is, we we're going to say yeah, the business stuff to the end, but why don't you go ahead and let us know what's what's going on with City Girl Prepper? I, there's just been, uh, I think, an increase in awareness in the need for preparedness. We've got. Um, that movie San Andreas was out yeah. a few months ago oh, that got a lot of people talking that maybe haven't been talking before. Um, I think it was just enough over-the-top Hollywood to didn't scare people too badly, but it definitely started the conversation. The pr- um, I've been doing more and more parties. I've been adding consultants. I've been doing packs for schools. So a lot of great things. The, the preview of San Andreas scared me enough to not want to watch the movie. <laughs> And make sure I had I got a couple extra buckets of food <laughs> prepared. Well, maybe if on your own TV it won't be as bad of a big screen. Yeah, but, you what? know there were a lot. Of, there were a lot of parts that were definitely just crazy that made you know that this was a Hollywood movie. Okay. Um, I don't know too many people who would drive a little motorboat straight into a tsunami. Okay, and, and, <laughs> right. And, 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 and make it to the other side. So it was it was kind of crazy. But Edge of the Sea and uh, did a little bit of guerrilla marketing at the theater. And so um, it, it was we had a fun time with it. That's I, awesome. Again, it, it just sparked the conversation. That's awesome. And okay, so give us a little bit of background on on City Girl Preppers. How long how long ago did you start it? What was the how how did you start? How did you start? And then um, like how did you come up with the idea? So well, my business has been it's been about twenty months now that I have been in business. I sold my very first backpack in December twenty thirteen, and I came to that conclusion that I wanted to do this because I wanted to make a difference in my community. My husband and I had both gone through the CERT training, which is Community Emergency Response Team, that is a FEMA managed uh, pro- or group of civilian, a civilian corps. And so we had gone through that. And while I was in that training, in telling some of my circle of friends what I was doing, I realized that there's so many people who are underprepared in my community alone. And I wanted to make a difference. You know, it hurt me when I heard these moms who were on the soccer field who, you know, just said, oh, I wouldn't know what to do in case something happened. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is, these are people I know. They're, they just don't even know what to do. So um, I wanted to make sure that I could do something about it. Now, what do you so, – what- Go go ahead. Uh, wh- what is the first um, the first uh, uh, thing that you tell people to be to be prepared for, or the, in the emergency pre- preparedness? What is the first thing, the first step to being prepared? Uh, I think the well, the most important thing you really need is the water. You know, your food and water are your priority. American uh, American Red Cross, FEMA, they recommend that you have a half a gallon of drinking water per person per day, and that is got to be priority because you can go a lot longer without food but you can mm-hmm. only go three days without water mm-hmm. and um we i actually sell a product that has a 50 year shelf life which has been phenomenal to be able to bring that product into the market help bring the product to marketplace so um the water that's priority and then after that you start adding your gear you start adding your um your other supplies that are help get you through whatever emergency comes our way now, city girl prepper, there's a there's a lot of prepping. I mean, um, since the last time we talked, I've I've started watching the show that you suggested that I watch with uh, the all the prepping for the possibilities of things, and then oh, they the, rate them. The doomsday, the doomsday prepper. That one, yeah. <laughs> oh no. So, so you know, I got my zombie apocalypse ready. I got my nuclear blast, of, you know, ready. <laughs> that 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 one ready too. Um, but. There, the, you, City Girl Prepper is, is unique in the fact that um, a lot of preppers uh, kind of have that doomsday mentality, but 
but uh, City Girl is very down down to earth, like the name of our show. <laughs> That's right, and you're down to earth prepper. <laughs> and and you're very um, uh, just rational. Um, and one of the things that I love, we were talking about before the show, is um, on your YouTube video, you have uh, a video where you're like, you know, add something that you like, add some comfort stuff into your emergency prepared uh, pack so that you're ready for, um, you're ready for, you're ready for the emotional trauma that would come along with that you can help um, re- get through it, right? Yeah. Exactly. And that's really true. And one of the differentiating things about my packs is one, they are targeted a little bit more towards women and their families. So I, I found in the marketplace that a lot of times you will find men who I think traditionally are providers. They will go out and maybe buy something that is very tactical and sometimes even militaristic. You know, it's camo, it's boring. And I found that, you know, that type of preparedness didn't really resonate with, um, like, the Orange County, as I say, the Orange County mom, you know, this kind of SoCal uh, person. And so I do put a lot, I do put some feminine hygiene. I make sure my packs have women's fit gloves. Um, I have a kid pack, a pet pack, and all these things have, like, comfort items. The pet pack has a chew toy. The kid pack has a coloring book. The, you know, the women's pack has chocolate. So I really try to talk to that because in an emergency, the psychological trauma is one of the biggest things we're going to be dealing with. Um, You're going to have some people who are injured, of course, but if I asked each of you today if you remember where you were when something traumatic happened, I bet you could tell me even maybe the clothes you were wearing and what you were feeling and what you smelled. But if you get, God, if I asked you when you were, if you were ever cut like on your arm or your leg, you'd probably be like, probably. So right. I, that's why the comfort is so important. I think that's really important too, especially with the kids, because uh, I worked in public safety for a little while and it was two instances where I remember children being involved in a situation where there was an emergency and one time I actually had little badge stickers in my pocket and I uh, would give those to the kids as a way to get their mind off of what was happening to their mother and to re- redirect them and then another time I took actually took my badge off and handed it to a child as I was you know dealing with a massive head wound across his forehead to get his mind off of all the blood and everything told him I need you to hold on to this for me this is very important to, so that one thing that you can use to you know, make comforting or to redirect the mind from what's going on is really important. So that's, that's, that's really cool. Well, I'm, I'm a real big advocate, and this is something I think I learned in basic preparedness, that everyone has to have a job. And if you, you have to have something, a distraction and a job. And so my kit that I make, the backpack, um, I do have a kid pack that I face for my 10 and under cloud. I've launched a teen pack since we talked, a dorm room pack, and again, it's like that way people can kind of carry their, they can carry their own weight. Right. And instead of mom having to carry an extra 10 pounds of food, water, and gear, the kid can carry their own. They're given a job. And there's band-aids in there. If they need to put something on a boo-boo, then they feel like they're making, a, you know, a difference and actually contributing. Yeah. And I mean, I think we had talked last time about um, even throwing, you know, a pack of cards or and I remember Mm -hmm. I went home and packed where where I have. I don't have a pack yet. I need to get with you and get a pack. (laughs) But I have. I do, too. (laughs) But I have a section of my house where I have all my stuff kept. Right. And I remember I went and got a pack of Uno cards and put it with it. Like I'm going to need something. You know, if Absolutely. I'm sitting in a, if I'm sitting in a temporary shelter, I'm going to need something to keep keep me going for a couple of days because uh, we uh, I've been in emergency situations. You know, I worked in down in Hurricane Katrina and watched you know people just waiting in lines and lines to get food or to get supplies or whatever they needed, waiting, 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 and then and then just the waiting part of being able to go and as they reopen neighborhoods that they could get back into. And well, you mentioned a really good when you mentioned shelters, and that's something I like talk a lot about in, um, with my kit because I do put backpacks on or I do sell them in the form of a backpack because I think it's the most mobile. If you need to use it in your home, you can. If you need to get out and get to a shelter, you can still take your gear with you. And then even though you're in a shelter, you're really only relying on the shelter for the shelter. Right. Um, if you have three days supply of food and water in your backpack ready to go, that could alleviate 
the time or the necessity to wait into a queue like that to get, you know, your priority items. So uh, apart from um, your, let's say your, uh, we've talked about your comfort items, your your things that you would need. What what are the what's this one of the items that most people forget to pack in their in their packs? I almost said bug out pack, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bug spray. A lot of people do call them bug out packs. That's for sure, you know they're Bob. You have a Bob, and um, so we have bug out bags. Or sometimes, you know, in SoCal, I think we're really going to be you know and stuck in our homes, and so it's really a bug in bag. You know, right. You're going to keep that in in your home. So um, one thing that people maybe forget, I think, again, the comfort, maybe not enough, water, and just gear. You know, things, being prepared is a state of mind. Being prepared is a state of mind. And so you're going to want the resources available to you so that you can actually, you know, do what you need to do. The tarp, the cable ties, the rope, the um, all those items that you might not think about and you might not have a specific use for them, but if you have them, you're going to be able to put them to use. And um, I always date myself when I say this, but kind of like a MacGyver. Right. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> you can, and you know, a lot of people know what that is, where you just, you're going to use what you have right. to put something together. So I think that just having those real basic survival you know, items like you almost like if you looked up 10 essentials on um, the internet for like boy scouting or camping or those kinds of things are what you're going to want in your pack. Nimi, hmm. uh, you kind of blinked out when she said MacGyver. Do I need to fill you in after no. the show what that is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't get smacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to find I have to find like a whole Gen Y equivalent to that. Right, uh, right. MacGyver For a second, reference. there was there was the mockery of MacGyver, the MacGuber, but that you don't want to use that guy. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no MacGuber. <laughs> um, so, so you also do parties. You also do packing parties, and I, yeah, I do. Um, the the prepper parties are. Um, have really grown, and I actually have added a couple of consultants to my team who are out for doing it too. So it's very similar to go that most women are familiar with, either with uh, jewelry or makeup uh, or you know clothing. But instead, its focus is is readiness, and it's I do a brief introduction to seventy two hour pack and what's in it, why it's there, and then it gives people in it a chance to just shop right there. I find that um, getting prepared is stays on a person's to-do list longer than it should, uh-huh. and having it right there in front of them makes it easy for them to take care of it. Right. Do it right away. Well, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to go to a break. Um, our guest is Jennifer Stewart. Ty, am I saying your last name right? That's right. Okay. Good. I'm always confused. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go to a break. City Girl Preppers is going to come back, and we're going to talk more about how to be prepared, um, making sure that you are prepared for an emergency that, that might happen. And we'll be back in a little bit. Down to Earth Talk. <laughs> Hey, this is Steve Sanchez, and do you know in 2007, I went off to the doctor for a basic checkup, and he informed me, Steve, you got plaque built up around your heart, and you're going to need stents. I informed him, with no offense, doc, I need a second opinion. I go off to a naturopathic doctor, and he introduces me to something called Zango. It's a juice made of the whole mangosteen fruit. You know, the mangosteen fruit has been used for centuries for healing. So, hey, what do I have to lose? I tried it. Three months later, I go back to my cardiologist, no plaque, no stents, and I'm proud to say seven and a half years later, I'm still Free. I want to turn you on to Zango because it's the only true 100% mangosteen fruit juice. It's patented. In fact, the Mayo Clinic is paying attention because they're doing an extensive study because they cannot ignore all the testimonials around the world. I want to give you a free sample of the Zango juice today. Simply call 888 888- 309-5656. That's 888-309-5656 for your free mangosteen juice sample today from the company called Zango. 
You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. And we are back down to earth talk. (laughs) We got our second dose of coffee. We got our second shots. What? (laughs) You got your second dose of coffee. I'm over here with water. Yeah. All right. (laughs) I'm trying to process what I just said. (laughs) Hey, what's up, girl? So we are here with Jennifer Stewart Ty, and she is the founder of City Girl Preppers, um, and that's a, a company that's helping people to be prepared. Um, we were talking a little bit in a break about cert training. David, you've you've been cert trained for a while. Yeah, I've uh, I've gone through the uh, the cert program when I was working in public safety, and I continue to work with uh, Rialto Fire Department and their cert program to continue to make sure that the community knows the importance of being cert certified, but I think it's really important that we're talking to you in combination with cert because people may, you can have the knowledge, but if you don't have tools with the knowledge, then the knowledge means nothing. So I think people being prepared for situations like disasters or even, I mean, most recently, about a year and a half ago, me and my wife actually came up on a scene where a young man had been hit by a car and uh, he was laying in the street and nobody had an emergency kit. Nobody had wow. anything to put um you know to hold on the wound and stuff so luckily i was still working in public safety so i had my pack in the back of the car so i jumped out and was able to start rendering aid but i think you know more people being prepared and having kits like this it would be really helpful yeah we're not just talking today about we're talking about emergency preparedness and when you say the words emergency preparedness the first thing you think of is earthquakes in california right Mm -hmm. (laughs) then you think of um you know storms floods floods, all that you think of all the those things but really emergency preparedness is more than just the big events Mm -hmm. but it's it's your emergency it could be your emergency in a neighborhood Mm -hmm. you know like the fires that we've had recently you know emergency preparedness is not just a big national event or a statewide event that affects a lot of people but it could be like you said you're driving down the street and somebody got hit by a car and 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 luckily you were there to have with with that kit that was able to help i mean, I, I wanted to lo- to know more about the parties like are they structured kind of like and forgive me if this is a bad <laughs> comparison but like tupperware parties and stuff like where tupperware party? yeah yes. like so yeah, it's like something really like about. you get people interested and like they're really excited and you really have a, a captive audience so you get a chance to really do some education as long as as, as well as sales correct Exactly. It, it is a combination. I, I am for profit, but ultimately, you know, I, I'm there to educate people. I had a woman come to a party a couple of weeks ago, and she had a folder of things she'd been collecting about preparedness. And she wanted to kind of know if she was on the right track. And so she ended up buying some packs from me, but she also knew that there were a couple things that, you know, she could do on her own. And, and I, my goal is as long as someone is getting prepared and being self-reliant, then, then that's like what's most important at the end of the day. Right. Because the, and that self-reliance is the important thing too. Like you had talked about earlier when we were talking about shelters, the, the resources that are coming in after a regional disaster are then divided up. They're limited resources. Mm -hmm. And by the time they even get to us. I mean, the first responders we work with, they tell tell you straight out when we do, like, neighborhood. We we participate in a group called Neighbor for Neighbor, very much like a neighborhood watch, but with Mm -hmm. a preparedness angle. And it's something happening in the Steel Beach, Orange County area. And the fire and first responders will say, we're not coming to help you. You know, right. you have to know this, and and they, you know, we're sorry, but we won't be there. We'll be putting out literally fires or major, major, you know, community, you know, 
problems. And that makes me think so, of something that I, I heard on the radio today was actually with one of the massive fires that's going on in Washington right now, they actually mm-hmm. said we are not taking any types of donations except for cash because we have no way to facilitate getting clothing, food, water to people. We don't have nowhere to store that. We have no system to get that out to people. So wow. that speaks to people being prepared as well as having, you know, mm-hmm. having preparedness within yourself so that you don't have to worry about them not even being able to facilitate getting food and water to you. Well, and something I want to touch on a few things real quick too before before we um, our time is up is that there's some great apps out there and some great resources for getting information. We're talking all about fires right now. I know those are um, really filling our news story. They said California is already pretty much what used a third of the budget in the last six weeks right. of our fiscal budget for fires, and um, fires is the number one. Um, emergency that happens Mm -hmm. and so that's if there's anything that people can prepare their family for is that escape plan and important documents so the Red Cross does have some really um, great resources as on apps that you can download they have a wildfire they have a um, earthquake app I think it's either hurricane or tornado and then they just launched this another one called emergency that allows you to ping your family members in case an emergency so you know if they're all right or not. Wow. So I really recommend that people download those apps. They're all free. Um, the other thing is Nixel. And I don't know if you guys use that at all. but you Yeah, we do actually. Those. In the city of Rialto, we use that a lot. So Yeah, and so for, your, for people listening, if you text your zip code to 888-777, so you put in the phone number area, 888-777, and then in the message area, you put your zip code. You will then get emergency messages from your your community management system. Wow. Oh, and awesome. um, and that, it's, it's nationwide. So if you want to manage or get updates on another, like I had a friend put it, to her brother lives in Dallas, or, you know, so she put in his zip code. And so she knows when things are going on in his area. So it, it is nationwide. But I think those two things, um, a tip with fires, too, it used to be that it was have your important papers ready to go. Um, nowadays, in this age of technology, I recommend that people use, like, a flash drive or a thumb drive to either download information on there, scan it into files, and put that someplace safe um, so that you will have your documents with you really anywhere. Right. that you can find a computer. I have a question. I wanted to know, um, how long does your gear last for in an emergency situation? So the supplies that I put in, it's the five-year shelf life, and that's, I put in a 3,600-calorie bar, so that would be three days. Okay. The water that I use in the pack, it is a little less than half a gallon because it would get really heavy if it were the full half of a gallon. Um and it is also five-year shelf life pouches. Okay. The other, um, the only other thing that has a limited expiration is I do put like a Benadryl, an ibuprofen, and an anti-diarrheal in. And most meds are only good for 18 months. They're still good after that. They just their potency is not there. But it's so. But they are built for three days. Right. And then um, we we've talked about in the past about the 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 I think the FEMA prepared water. The, the, I forget exactly who it was that that said, you know, you should have this much water at your residence. But really, um, like you said, you know, if 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 a big disaster was to happen and you're stuck in um, having three days might be unrealistic and it might be better to be prepared for, you know, a week worth of water. Mm hmm. When we went through our CERT training, they said 10 to 14 days yeah. is, is really what they said to prepare for. They said by the time anything is going to get into where, if it's a regional disaster and the roads are not functioning, um, there's no distribution process, 10 to 14 days is what you need to prepare for your family realistically. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking this this entire time we're having this conversation, just like I think last time we talked, I'm thinking of the survivor stories that I saw down in Louisiana after Hurricane Katrina mm-hmm. and the people that, I mean, they, they were cut off. They were cut off for after Katrina came in 
for weeks and then as soon as they as soon as help started coming in another hurricane came in and they were stuck again and Mm -hmm. and there were the area we were working in a lot of people were prepped a lot of people were prepared but one one you know 10 blocks over was the ninth ward where people were unprepared and chaos ensued Mm -hmm. well and we i've heard stories and katrina those folks that actually were prepared went through their supplies faster than they anticipated right Uh, one we're not used to rationing in our culture right and and two they were bored so they ate (laughs) <laughs> or they, they they used up their rations. Yeah. So that's something else to, to keep in mind when you're preparing, which, you know, if you're, if you're preparing your home, you know, the first thing you generally do in emergency is, is eat stuff out of your fridge. Right. And then you go to your freezer and then your cupboard. But it's really easy to, to buy an extra two cans of, of something every time you go to the grocery store. Right. And... And we do a lot of under-bed storage in our house because we, we do live in a small space. So it doesn't you don't have to be in a large area or have a lot of land or a lot of square footage to get your family prepared. You just have to really be creative sometimes. Right. I have a friend who has two 60-foot um, – not 60-foot. That's way too big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think wow. they're six-foot. Um, coolers full of canned food. And, and, um, and they just keep them in the garage. They just have them in the garage and they go through them every couple of years and, and cycle out the stuff that they can't use or they bring it inside stuff and take new stuff into it and put, add it into it. Um, and they, they were bragging to me one day, oh, we'll be fine. And I was like, yeah, until I show up. Right. Well, that's, that's, always, the, that's always the uh, common joke, right? Like, oh, I don't need to get prepared as long as you are. Right. But, you know, I, home security is another part of the conversation. Um, I do sell a pepper spray and a stun gun. A lot of people do look to firearms to secure their property. Mm-hmm. Um, when you talk to people who are very serious about um, preparing and taking care of their family, but, you know, everyone has different comfort levels. So I do sell a pepper spray and a stun gun because I feel that personal protection is part of the conversation. Right, definitely. Well, we have um, just about probably one minute left yep we're getting a one minute sign right now when i say that oh my uh, gosh so i know it goes quick every time so totally how can excited. people how can people get a hold of you so i have a website it's citygirlprepper.com and i um, that is the best way so www.citygirlprepper.com i have uh, my products up there information about parties information about joining my team and I also am on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. Are you going to be at Labor um, of Love again this year? I'm not going <sighs> to be there this year. I know. Um, I was just talking to Don, uh, Donna. Um, that weekend is just, uh, the busier I get, the harder it is for me to do events, <laughs> yep. actually. Well, there's so, the there's the the music's playing. Thank you so much for being with us this week, you. Jennifer. We appreciate it so much. I'm going to go home and start packing some stuff up and make sure I'm ready. Even All more. Right. Yeah, and let, let's get you hooked up. Thanks again for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Consider this your invitation to sell. At buysellmakeoffer.com, you can sell as much as you want for the next 60 days without paying any fees whatsoever. Sound incredible? It is, and it's true. Buysellmakeoffer.com is the new exciting way to sell your stuff online. Make extra money right now. Sell your old car, furniture, video games, household items, clothes, even your home. Sell anything that's legal. Load up your stuff to sell right now at buysellmakeoffer.com. This is your official invitation to get on board to sell your stuff right now free for the next 60 days and once you see how easy it is you'll want to sign up for more because there are no item fees that's right take this opportunity to move items from the other guys and sell it for free you might even win a samsung tablet amazon gift cards and other cool prizes buy sell make offer.com is the future of online selling you can use skype to talk to your buyer or seller plus you can use video to showcase your items buy sell make offer.com this 